You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. On today's episode of the podcast, we review the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. It's the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And let's get started. Let's have a look at the group tables from the first round and the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. In the first round, in Group A, Sri Lanka and the Netherlands qualified to go through to the Super 12 stage. In Group B, it was Zimbabwe and Ireland who booked their place in the Super 12 stage from the first round of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at the Super 12 tables from the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. In Group 1 of the Super 12 stage, New Zealand and England qualified for the semi-finals. In Group 2, it was India and Pakistan who booked their place in the semi-finals of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. 22. Let's have a look at all the stats from the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's start with the leading run scorers from the tournament. Leading run scorer for the T20 World Cup in 2022 was Virat Kohli with 296 runs, O'Dow 242, Yadav 239, Butler 225, Mendes 223, Raza 219, Nisanka, 214, Hales, 212, Tucker, 204, and Phillips, 201. So those were the leading run scorers in the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at the leading wicket takers from the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Hasaranga was the leading wicket taker for the tournament with 15 wickets. Curran and Delida with 13 wickets each. 12 wickets for Musabandi, 11 wickets for Nokia, Afridi, Khan, Little and Van Mikrum, and 10 wickets for Singh. And those were the leading wicket takers from the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at the most catches from the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Shanaka. From Sri Lanka had the most catches in the tournament with nine. Adair had seven, six catches each for Livingston and Yadda, five catches each for Alan, Rabada, Sam Curran, Wasim, Shumba, and four catches to Williamson. Those were the most catches from the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at the most dismissals by a wicketkeeper in this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Butler and Edwards led the way with nine dismissals each. Seven for de Kock, six for Conway, Tucker and Mendes, five for Hassan and Chaveka, and four dismissals for Green, Kartik and Rizwan. And those were the leading most dismissals by a wicketkeeper in this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at the results from the semi-finals and the final of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. In the first semi-final, it was New Zealand and Pakistan from the SCG. Pakistan won by seven wickets and Mohamed Rizwan was named player of the match. The second semi-final saw India and England play at the Adelaide Oval. England won by 10 wickets and Alex Howes was named player of the match. Pakistan and England faced off in the final at the MCG. England won by five wickets, and Sam Curran was named player of the match. England were the ICC T20 World Cup 2022 champions, and Sam Curran was named player of the tournament. Let's have a look at the team performances from the first round of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022 and talk about how they went in this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's start with Namibia and have a look at their performance during the first round of this ICC T20 World Cup for 
22. They won one game and lost two. The leading run scorer was Jan Friedlink with 101 runs. The leading wicket taker was Bernard Scholes with four. The results from Namibia in the first round, they won against Sri Lanka by 55 runs. They lost against the Netherlands by five wickets. And they lost against the UAE by seven runs to wrap up their tournament in the first round. It was a disappointing T20 World Cup for Namibia. After making it to the Super 12 stage in the 2021 T20 World Cup in the UAE, they failed to qualify for the Super 12 stage in Australia in 2022. Just didn't perform at their best throughout the first round, inconsistent with both bat and ball at times, but they continued to show signs of improvement during this T20 World Cup. The highlight for Namibia from this T20 World Cup was beating Sri Lanka, a full member nation in the first game of the tournament. That win will certainly boost their confidence as a team going forward and definitely a big achievement from this Namibian team to beat Sri Lanka, who is a, a full member nation. Um, and hopefully they will grow and develop from this T20 World Cup as well. Uh, let's hope we see Namibia at the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and the USA. Let's have a look at the UAE and how they performed in the first round during this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won one game and lost two. Leading run scorer was Mohamed Wazim with 93 runs. Leading wicket takers were Kartik Metapan and Sarul Khan with five. The results from the UAE in the first round, they lost against the Netherlands by three wickets, they lost against Sri Lanka by 79 runs, and they won against Namibia by seven runs. For the UAE, this T20 World Cup for them was all about developing as a team and growing the game of cricket in the UAE. It was always going to be a challenge for them to qualify for the Super 12 stage, but they gave it a good go. They challenged teams like the Netherlands and Sri Lanka, but couldn't get the victory and couldn't get the results that they wanted. The two biggest highlights for the UAE is their victory over Namibia by seven runs and the hat-trick that Kartik Metapan took against Sri Lanka were definitely big highlights from the UAE in this tournament. Let's hope we see the UAE in the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's have a look at the West Indies and how they performed in the first round during this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won one game and lost two. Leading run scorer was Brandon King with 79. Leading wicket taker was Azari Joseph with six. The results from the first round, they lost to Scotland by 42 runs. They won against Zimbabwe by 31 runs. And they lost against Ireland by nine wickets. Um, it was a disappointing T20 World Cup from the two-time T20 World Cup champions in the West Indies. For the first time, they found themselves having to qualify for the Super 12 stage for a T20 World Cup, but they failed to qualify for the Super 12 stage for the first time ever. Didn't play well at all in this tournament, uh, very inconsistent, um, didn't find any momentum or rhythm, they looked out of place, um, a lot of players were struggling uh, for form with both bat and ball, and nothing went right for the West Indies, and it pretty much sums up the West Indies cricket at the moment, especially their T20 cricket. Uh, changing from the older generation to the new younger generation of course a lot of senior players have retired so it's going to be a long rebuilding stage for the West Indies um, a lot of soul searching and thinking for the West Indies in their T20 cricket and ahead of the home T20 World Cup in 2024 which will be played in the Caribbean and in the USA have a look at Scotland's performance in the first round during this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won one game and lost two. Leading run scorer was George Munsey with 121 runs. Leading wicket taker was Matt Watt with five. The results from Scotland in the first round, they won against the West Indies by 42 runs. They lost against Ireland by six wickets and they lost against Zimbabwe by five wickets to wrap up the first round for them. After qualifying for the Super 12 stage in 2021, Scotland were determined to qualify for the Super 12 stage in 2022, but it wasn't to be for Scotland. The biggest highlight for Scotland was their victory over the West Indies, a very good win from Scotland indeed, and definitely a win they will remember for a long time. Throughout the first round, they showed some signs of improvement as a cricket team, 
Scotland would have learnt a lot from this T20 World Cup in Australia as a team going forward. Uh, they continued to show improvement in their T20 cricket throughout this T20 World Cup at times. Let's hope we see them in the T20 World Cup in 2024 in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's have a look at the team performances from the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022 and talk about how they went in this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's start with Group 1, and let's have a look at England's team performance in the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won three games and lost one in the Super 12 stage, England. Leading run scorer was Dross Butler with 225 runs. Leading wicket-taker was Sam Curran with 13 wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for England... They won against Afghanistan by five wickets. They lost to Ireland by five runs on Duckworth Lewis. The game against Australia was abandoned. They won against New Zealand by 20 runs. They won against Sri Lanka by four wickets. In the second semi-final against India, they won by 10 wickets. And in the final of the T20 World Cup for 2022, they won against Pakistan by five wickets to be crowned champions of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. It was a fantastic T20 World Cup from England. By far the best team in this T20 World Cup. England had a strong squad, strong batting and skillful bowlers. It wasn't a convincing start from England at the start of the tournament, just getting over the line against Afghanistan at Perth, then losing against Ireland at the MCG put their semi-final hopes in doubt. They avoided an elimination final against rivals Australia at the MCG after rain spoiled the party. So England needed to win their last two games against New Zealand and Sri Lanka to qualify for the semi-finals. England were able to do that. They were able to beat New Zealand by 20 runs at the Gabba. And they were able to win against Sri Lanka by four wickets at the SCG, which saw England go through to the semi-finals and knock out defending champions Australia. England smashed India in the, in the semi-final at Adelaide to book their place in the final against Pakistan. Butlers and... Butler and Hales's partnership, I should say, was unreal. And it was an absolute clinic of T20 batting. England's best game of the T20 World Cup thus far. They outplayed Pakistan in the final. They peaked at the right time as a team. Joss Butler captained well. England's batters did the job and scored the runs. England's bowlers did the job and took wickets. Sam Curran bowled well, player of the match in the final. And he was named player of the tournament as well. He also bowled well in the final and throughout this tournament. England, by far the number one team in the world by winning this T20 World Cup, going to be favourites again to win the tournament in 2024 in the Caribbean and the USA. They are good good um, chances of doing that, actually. And uh, could they break the drought or curse and become the first team to win back-to-back -back T20 World Cups? But what we saw from them in this tournament... They're probably going to do that because they are a very strong T20 team, very talented, very skillful, and they deserved to win the T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at Australia's team performance in the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won three games and lost one in the Super 12 stage, Australia. Leading run scorer was Marcus Stornis with 126 runs. Leading wicket-takers were Josh Hazelwood and Adam Zampa with five wickets each. Results in the Super 12 stage for Australia. They lost to New Zealand by 89 runs. They won against Sri Lanka by seven wickets. The game against England was abandoned. They won against Ireland by 42 runs. And they won against Afghanistan by four runs in their last game of their Super 12 campaign in this T20 World Cup for 2022. A disappointing T20 World Cup for the defending champions, Australia. Just didn't look like they were ever in this T20 World Cup. The batting and bowling was poor, losing badly to New Zealand in the first game by 89 runs. Set Australia back in this T20 World Cup big time, with net run rate uh, their biggest uh, challenge. And they were pretty much out of the T20 World Cup by the end of the first game they played against New Zealand. They needed to win their remaining games and try and boost their net run rate in order to progress to the semi-finals. But that was going to be a big task for Australia. But in the end, Australia failed miserably 
and didn't really do a good job of it. They dodged a bullet when they didn't have to play England at the MCG. Basically, that game for both teams was an elimination final, basically. But both teams managed to get away from that game by taking a point each. Australia managed to win their last remaining games against Ireland and Afghanistan, but boosting their net run rate was a complete failure for Australia. They blew two good opportunities against Ireland and Afghanistan. They should have bowled them out for low scores, but didn't do it. Didn't deserve to make it to the semi-finals. A lot of thinking and soul-searching for the Australian team to do ahead of the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's have a look at New Zealand's team performance in the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won three games and lost one in the Super 12 stage New Zealand. Leading run scorer was Glenn Phillips with 201 runs. Leading wicket taker was Mitchell Satner with nine wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for New Zealand. They won against Australia by 89 runs. The game against Afghanistan was abandoned. They won against Sri Lanka by 65 runs. They lost to England by 20 runs. And they won against Ireland by 35 runs. In the first semi-final against Pakistan, they lost by seven wickets to end their T20 World Cup campaign for 2022. New Zealand would be disappointed not to go all the way in this T20 World Cup for 2022. Didn't quite play well or at their best in the semi-final against Pakistan at the SCG, losing by seven wickets. They were up and down in this T20 World Cup inconsistent, uh, looked good in the first game against Australia in that big victory by 89 runs, but ever since they won that first game against Australia, it was pretty much an inconsistent performance from New Zealand. The batting struggled, the bowling struggled at times, the batting and bowling faults were exposed. Um, as I mentioned, the semi-final against Pakistan wasn't their greatest game, didn't show up at all in the semi-final, looked a bit lacklustre, not really interested and not really up for the contest. And in the end, it showed in their performance in the semi-finals. So they'll be disappointed not to go all the way in 2022, but they'll be back, New Zealand, in the T20 World Cup in 2024 in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's have a look at Sri Lanka's team performance during the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won two games and lost three in the Super 12 stage. Leading run scorer was Kusa Mendes with 223 runs. Leading wicket taker was Wadhindu Hasaranga with 15 wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for Sri Lanka. They won against Ireland by nine wickets. They lost against Australia by seven wickets. They lost against New Zealand by 65 runs. They won against Afghanistan by six wickets. And their final game of the Super 12 stage, they lost to England by four wickets. And that's how Sri Lanka performed in the Super 12 stage of the T20 World Cup. Um, it was a tough T20 World Cup for Sri Lanka. Had to qualify to get into the Super 12 stage for the second T20 World Cup in a row. They had a shock loss to Namibia where they lost by 55 runs in the first round for the first game of the tournament. And that loss set them back and they looked in trouble and... Their qualification hopes for the Super 12 stage after that loss to Namibia uh, were in doubt. But they managed to bounce back from that defeat and they were able to qualify winning two games and losing one and topping the group in Group A in the first round. And they were able to book their spot in Group 1 of the Super 12 stage. Um, a very tough group, but they managed to win two games and, and lost three. Those two wins against Ireland and Afghanistan against Australia, New Zealand, and England, I should say, they struggled. Um, they just didn't find any consistency throughout the tournament with both bat and ball. Expectations coming after uh, winning the Asia Cup to do well in this T20 World Cup. And that was going to be a challenge for Sri Lanka to live up to. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't get anything going in this tournament with both bat and ball. It was a young team. But during the tournament, we saw what they can do with both bat and ball. So for Sri Lanka, they will not have to qualify for the next T20 World Cup in 2024 in the Caribbean and in the USA. But they will be hoping to put in a better performance in the 2024 T20 World Cup. Let's have a look at Afghanistan's team performance in this Super 12 stage of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. 
They didn't win any games at all. They lost three games throughout the Super 12 stage. Leading run scorer was Ibrahim Sadrin with 80 runs. Leading wicket takers were Majib Rahman and Rashid Khan with four wickets each. The results from Afghanistan in this Super 12 stage of the T20 World Cup. They lost against England by five wickets. The match against New Zealand was abandoned. The match against Ireland was abandoned as well. They lost against Sri Lanka by six wickets. And they lost to Australia by four runs to end their T20 World Cup campaign. A tough T20 World Cup for Afghanistan. Didn't win a single game, and a few no results didn't help their cause either. They will be disappointed not to win a single game throughout this tournament. But for Afghanistan, they nearly defeated Australia at Adelaide, and nearly caused the biggest upset of this T20 World Cup. Rashid Khan nearly got Afghanistan home in the run chase, but unfortunately for Afghanistan, they couldn't get the job done over Australia, going down by four runs. But in the games Afghanistan played, we saw glimpses of their best with both bat and ball, and some of the talent emerging from Afghanistan cricket, and that is good signs to see going forward into the future. Afghanistan will be looking to do better in the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's have a look at Ireland's team performance in this Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won one game and lost three. Leading run scorer was Lauren Tucker with 204 runs. Leading wicket taker was Josh Little with 11. The results from Ireland in this Super 12 stage of the T20 World Cup. Their first game, they lost against Sri Lanka by nine wickets. They won against England by five runs on Duckworth Lewis. The game against Afghanistan was abandoned. They lost against Australia by 42 runs. And the last game of the Super 12 stage for Ireland, they lost against New Zealand by 35 runs. So that's how Ireland went about things in the Super 12 stage as a team. Um, after not qualifying for the Super 12 stage in 2021, Ireland was able to get through to the Super 12 stage in 2022. In the first round, they had two good wins over Scotland by six wickets and over the West Indies by nine wickets, was, which was definitely one of their big moments and big highlights of this tournament to qualify for the Super 12 stage. And they managed to qualify quite easily winning two games and losing one in the first round, as I mentioned, against Scotland and that famous win by nine wickets over the West Indies. But for Ireland, their biggest highlight of this T20 World Cup was beating England at the MCG. They batted and bowled well and deserved their victory over England at the MCG. The Irish fans were certainly happy that day at the MCG. Ireland didn't qualify for the semi-finals, as we know, but getting the chance to play against some of the world's best teams will put them in good stead going forward in their cricket development. At times, throughout the tournament, they played some good cricket, showed glimpses of their best with both bat and ball. Josh Little's hat-trick versus New Zealand at the Adelaide Oval was another highlight for Ireland, and definitely capped off what was a very good T20 World Cup from the Irish team. For Ireland, they haven't qualified automatically for the 2024 T20 World Cup, but let's hope they do qualify for 2024, and let's hope that Ireland do make it for the next World Cup in 2024. But overall, it was a, a very good T20 World Cup from, from Ireland. Let's have a look at Group 2's performances from the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022, and talk about how they went in this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. Let's have a look at Pakistan's team performance in this Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won three games and lost two in the Super 12 stage, Pakistan. Leading run scorers were Mohamed Rizwan and Shah Massoud with 175 runs each. Leading wicket takers were Shaheen Shah Afridi and Shadab Khan with 11 wickets each. The results in the Super 12 stage for Pakistan, they lost to India by four wickets. They lost against Zimbabwe by one run. They won against the Netherlands by six wickets. They won against South Africa by 33 runs on Duckworth Lewis. They won against Bangladesh by five wickets. In the first semi-final, they won against New Zealand by seven wickets. And in the final against England, they lost by five wickets to uh, finish runners-up in the T20 World Cup for 2022. It was an up-and-down T20 World Cup from Pakistan. 
losing their first two games to India and Zimbabwe, their semi-final hopes were almost gone. But Pakistan quickly put that behind them to win the next three games in a row to book their place in the semi-finals. But Pakistan needed some luck. And you need some luck in this game of cricket. They needed the Netherlands to defeat South Africa in an unlikely upset to qualify for the semi-finals. The Dutch did it and knocked South Africa out of the T20 World Cup and out of the semi-final race. Pakistan then needed to win their last game against Bangladesh to book a spot in the semi-finals, which they did comfortably, winning by five wickets. Pakistan peaked at the right time towards the end of the T20 World Cup, winning their last three games in a row to finish off the Super 12 stage, set them up nicely for the first semi-final against New Zealand. Uh, Pakistan repeating what they did back in the 1992 Cricket World Cup by coming from behind to win the whole tournament. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be in 2022 as they came across a very good England side in the final. But they played well in the semi-final against New Zealand and that was their best game of this T20 World Cup thus far, winning by seven wickets at the SCG over New Zealand. But in the final against England was not their best game of the tournament. Didn't bat well or bowl well and got outplayed by an England side who were by far the better team and the best team in this T20 World Cup. But for Pakistan, they should be proud of their efforts and they'll be hoping to go one step better in the 2024 T20 World Cup in the USA and in the Caribbean. Let's have a look at India's team performance in this Super 12 stage of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won four games and lost one in the Super 12 stage, India. Leading run scorer was Virat Kohli with 296 runs. Leading wicket taker was Ashdeep Singh with 10 wickets. The results of the Super 12 stage for India they won against Pakistan by four wickets. They won against the Netherlands by 56 runs. They lost to South Africa by five wickets. They won against Bangladesh by five runs on Duckworth Lewis. They won against Zimbabwe by 71 runs. In the second semi-final against England, they lost by 10 wickets, which brought an end to their T20 World Cup campaign for 2022. India, they will be disappointed with how they played in that semi-final against England at Adelaide Oval. Not their best performance in T20 cricket for some time. Just didn't show up and lacked an aggressive mentality. Outplayed with both bat and ball by a very good England side. But throughout the tournament, they played some good cricket. The first game against Pakistan, coming from behind to win that game, was an amazing victory for the Indian team. Virat Kohli's innings was unbelievable. And his innings got India over the line in that game against the rivals in Pakistan. Surakuma Yadav performed well with the bat and it has pretty much announced himself to the world during this T20 World Cup. Um, they lost that one game to South Africa in the Super 12 stage in Perth. Uh, they struggled against South Africa's pace attack, um, which really uh, tested them on that fast, bouncy pitch at the Perth Stadium. Uh, India, they were inconsistent with both bat and ball throughout the tournament. Some batters were firing, like Virat Kohli and Surakuma Yadav. Pretty much both of them scored majority of the runs for India in this tournament. And other batters, like Rohit Sharma, for example, the captain, wasn't really performing at his best and probably out of form. Uh, the bowling struggled at times during the tournament, and going into the tournament, that was India's biggest concern. How would they go with their bowling, knowing that there was no Bumrah, obviously out injured? That was a big blow for India before the tournament started. But in the semi-final against England, it really struggled. And it really highlighted how key is uh, Jasper Bumrah in this uh, bowling side. Um, he's a very important bowler to have in the attack for India. And they could have needed him in the semi-final against, uh, India, against uh, England, India. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they struggled. And that's pretty much highlighted their, their woes with the ball. Um, they failed to qualify for the semi-finals in 2021, but in 2022, India were able to qualify for the semi-finals, but they weren't able to get the job done against England, losing by 10 wickets in that semi-final in Adelaide. But a major rethink is in order for India in terms of their T20 cricket, a team who has the best T20 league in the world in the IPL. 
You would think India will win lots of T20 World Cups, but that hasn't been the case. They've only won one, and that was the first ever T20 World Cup in 2007. So a lot of rethinking, a lot of replanning, and some new game plan and strategies are in order for India going forward to the T20 World Cup in 2024. Let's have a look at South Africa's team performance in the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won two games and lost two in the Super 12 stage, South Africa. Leading run scorer was Riley Rousseau with 141 runs. Leading wicket taker was Anrik Norkia with 11 wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for South Africa, the first game against Zimbabwe was a no result. They won against Bangladesh by 104 runs. They won against India by five wickets. They lost to Pakistan by 33 runs on Duckworth Lewis. And they lost against the Netherlands by 13 runs, which brought in their semi-final hopes and their tournament for 2022. South Africa would be disappointed with how this T20 World Cup panned out. Yet again, the chokers tag is back. The game against the Netherlands, they seemed to stuff it up, stuff it up and blew a spot in the semi-finals. Played some good cricket throughout the T20 World Cup, batted well at times and bowled well at times. The highlight for them during this tournament was that big win against India at Perth. Their fast bowlers doing the damage in Nokia, Rabada and Ngidi. South Africa were most people's dark horse to win this T20 World Cup, but once again in a major tournament, they managed to stuff it up and choke. Looking good in the Super 12 stage, at one stage, could have finished top of the group or at least second place in the group. But unfortunately, losing that last game to the Netherlands sort of spoiled the party for South Africa. This will sting a bit for South Africa, but they will need to find a way to break the chokers tag going forward in major tournaments. And hopefully they can break that in the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and in the USA. But overall, South Africa will be very disappointed that they couldn't go through to qualify for the semi-finals, and they'll be hoping to bounce back in the next T20 World Cup in 2024. Let's have a look at Bangladesh's performance in the Super 12 stage of this ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won two games and lost three in the Super 12 stage, Bangladesh. Leading run scorer was Najul Hussain Chanto with 180 runs. Leading wicket-taker was Taskin Ahmed with eight wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for Bangladesh. They, they won against the Netherlands by nine runs. They lost to South Africa by 104 runs. They won against Zimbabwe by three runs. They lost to India by five runs on Duckworth Lewis. And they lost to Pakistan by five wickets in the last game of their Super 12 campaign. Before this T20 World Cup, Bangladesh were tipped by some that they will struggle and not do well in this tournament. But they managed to win a few games and put in some good performances along the way. The highlight for Bangladesh was the win at the Gabba against Zimbabwe by three runs. Drama in that game with the wicketkeeper from Bangladesh taking the ball in front of the stumps. Therefore, a no ball was called and Zimbabwe nearly had an opportunity to snatch victory out of the hands of Bangladesh. But Bangladesh managed to hold their nerve and they were able to win that game by three runs. But the game against India at the Adelaide Oval was a very good performance from Bangladesh as well. Uh, they pushed India and were competitive in that game, only to go down by five runs on Duckworth Lewis. So for Bangladesh, it was a mixed performance for them. At times they were, in, they were consistent, other times they were inconsistent, but they were able to win two games but they will be disappointed losing the three games in the way they did. But for Bangladesh, they have qualified for the next T20 World Cup in 2024 in the Caribbean and in the USA, and they'll be hoping to do better in the 2024 T20 World Cup in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's have a look at Zimbabwe's team performance in this Super 12 stage of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won one game, lost three. Leading run scorer was Sekinda Raza with 219 runs. Leading wicket taker was Blessing Musabandi with 12 wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for Zimbabwe. The first game against South Africa was a no result. They won against Pakistan by one run. They lost to Bangladesh by three runs. They lost to the Netherlands by five wickets, and they lost to India by 71 runs to end 
their Super 12 campaign in this T20 World Cup. Uh, this T20 World Cup for Zimbabwe was a huge step in the right direction for Zimbabwean cricket. For the first time in a while, they managed to qualify for a T20 World Cup, and they managed to qualify for the Super 12 stage of this year's T20 World Cup in Australia, which was a big achievement for Zimbabwe. Their biggest highlight of the tournament was beating Pakistan in Perth by one run. That was an amazing victory, and a game and a victory they will remember for a long time. But the fans on that day in Perth were celebrating with passion and enthusiasm, which was great to see. And it's great to see that so many people in Zimbabwe are watching cricket and cheering on their cricket team, which was fantastic to see from Zimbabwe and their fans throughout the whole tournament, not just the game in Perth. They had a great chance to potentially qualify for the semi-finals at one stage, but sort of fell away towards the back end of the Super 12 stage, and they sort of blew their opportunity to potentially qualify for the semi-finals. But playing against some of the world's best teams will put them in good stead going forward as a team. They haven't qualified automatically for the next T20 World Cup in 2024, but let's hope they can, and let's hope we see Zimbabwe back at the T20 World Cup again in two years' time in the USA and in the Caribbean. Let's have a look at the Netherlands team performance in this Super 12 stage of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2022. They won two games and lost three in the Super 12 stage. Leading run scorer was Max O'Dowd with 242 runs. Leading wicket taker was Baz De Lida with 13 wickets. The results in the Super 12 stage for the Netherlands. They lost to Bangladesh by nine runs. They lost to India by 56 runs. They lost to Pakistan by six wickets. They won against... Uh, Zimbabwe by five wickets and to wrap up their Super 12 in this year's T20 World Cup they were able to beat South Africa by 13 runs. This was a great T20 World Cup for the Netherlands. After not qualifying for the Super 12 stage in 2021 they managed to do it in 2022 in Australia. It was always going to be tough for the Netherlands to win some games in the Super 12 stage but they gave it a red hot crack and they did very well. The highlight for them was beating South Africa in Adelaide, and it was a good victory, and one they will remember for a long time. It was a brilliant victory by the Netherlands, beating South Africa by 13 runs in Adelaide. They batted well, and they bowled well, and they outplayed South Africa and knocked out South Africa of the semi-final race. But for the Netherlands, getting this exposure of playing against the top teams will put them in good stead going forward as a team, and hopefully make their development better in the game of cricket. But from them, we saw them play well at times. Um, definitely their bowling was good. Their batting was their weakest link throughout the tournament. But we saw that gradual improvement. Each and every game they played, we saw them get better. And they've got some very good talented players as well. So, for the Netherlands, the next T20 World Cup, they've already booked their place for the 2024 tournament. They don't have to go through the qualification process as they did in 2022. So that's good for the Netherlands. We will see them in the T20 World Cup in 2024 in the Caribbean and in the USA. Let's hope we see them put in another good performance in the 2024 T20 World Cup and continue to improve and compete with some of the world's best teams. What an ICC T20 World Cup for 2022 we have had in Australia. The rain dampened the vibe of the tournament and frustrated all fans, but the tournament was able to push through that. This T20 World Cup was an interesting tournament. It had it all, upsets, close games, and brilliant individual performances from bat and ball. Let's hope we have a great ICC T20 World Cup in 2024 in the Caribbean and in the USA. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get the latest episodes of the podcast, and like and share our Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Until next time, keep safe, and bye for now.